Following a wave of attacks, Ecuador is now at war with organized crime. And the country faces an uncertain future as authorities prioritize restoring order over long-term policymaking. This escalation of violence, unprecedented in the country's history, started after a top gang leader disappeared from prison and President Daniel Noboa declared a state of emergency, deploying thousands of troops on Ecuador's streets and in the prisons. But the country's gangs responded with their own major, coordinated show of force. They took guards hostage, kidnapped and killed police, detonated bombs, and attacked public institutions. Naboa declared war, designating 22 criminal groups as terrorist organizations and authorizing the country's armed forces to, quote, neutralize them. So what's next for Ecuador? With 22 gangs, the government's list of groups considered a threat has grown. These groups are the product of a criminal landscape that ballooned thanks to soaring cocaine profits and then broke apart as previously allied groups began fighting each other for control of strategic routes. While some, like the Chineros, the Lobos, and the Tigarones, are well known, others are relatively new targets. Drug trafficking represents the biggest moneymaker for most of these groups. But they've gotten increasingly involved in other crimes, like extortion, environmental crime, and kidnapping. For the most part, the gang's violence is concentrated in criminal hotspots. In the port city and drug transport hub of Guayaquil, armed men invaded a live news broadcast and took the crew hostage as the nation watched. Criminal groups have also attempted to take control of public institutions in Guayaquil, including a local hospital. But increasingly, the violence has also spilled into provinces like Loja and Orellana that were traditionally considered safe. President Naboa seems determined to flatten Ecuador's gangs. Aside from declaring war against them, his government has promised military and police official pardons. But past experience shows that this militarized approach is rarely successful in fighting organized crime. And Ecuador's gangs seem prepared to respond to new security measures with further escalation. Their violent attacks have continued into their second week. Complicating the situation further is that the gang's alliance against the government is likely temporary. Their own conflict over territory and criminal economies is simmering under the surface. That means that any government action that weakens one gang might strengthen another. We'll be tracking the situation as it unfolds in the coming days and weeks at Inside Crime. To learn more, visit our website, insightcrime.org, and follow us on social media for the latest updates.